Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists nurse practitioners with employment contract and independent contractor agreement review. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the average signing bonus for a nurse practitioner. So, uh, if you are getting a new job as an employee, um, many times the employee will or the employer <clears throat> will offer some kind of signing bonus. Um, uh, you know, prior to the start, although we'll get into details about that. So uh, how much is the average and what can you expect as an NP uh, taking on a new job? So first, most of the time you will only get a signing bonus if you are entering into an employment agreement. So if you're entering into an independent contractor agreement, uh, it's very unlikely you're going to get a signing bonus. So the first thing is just to kind of, uh, you know, figure out are you an independent contractor or, or an employee. Now, assuming you're an employee and assuming they offer a signing bonus, uh, how much can you expect? Well, uh, based on the Becker's Hospital Review from 2023, uh, they state that the average signing bonus for an NP and PA, they kind of lumped them into two, they didn't break them apart, is $8,355. So uh, I think that's on the high side. Uh, you will find positions where the NP will receive that high of a signing bonus. Um, but I, in my experience as someone who reviews NP contracts all year, um, I think five to 10 is probably the norm closer to five. Um, so the average of 8,300, I think would is probably a reasonable amount. Uh, you will find positions that will not offer a signing bonus at all. Now, certainly you can ask for one. And I think if you ask, um, you know, for a reasonable amount, somewhere between, you know, five to 10,000, that they will probably think about it um, and not just <laughs> tell you to take a hike. Um, now, let's talk about kind of some of the particularities of receiving a signing bonus. Now, when you receive that bonus can vary. So some places will provide you with the bonus once you sign the contract. So you can sign a contract months before you start. Um, and so that's one way of doing it. Some will give it in the first pay period after you actually commence providing care. Some will wait to give it to you until after the first year. And then there's usually some kind of repayment obligation tied to the signing bonus. So meaning, let's say you sign a two-year contract. Um, there will probably be language that states if you leave before the end of two years, you'll have to pay back either all or a portion of the signing bonus. So it behooves you as the NP to get a smaller inter interval for forgiveness. So let, let me give you an example. Um, let's say it's a two-year contract. Well, then you would want the bonus forgiven monthly. So for every month, 1 24th of the bonus is forgiven. If it's an all or nothing scenario uh, and you leave in month 23, you have to pay all of it back. Uh, whereas if it was monthly forgiveness, you'd only have to pay back 1 24th of it, which is nice. Uh, second consideration, it is taxable income. So you're not going to get a check for $10,000. Uh, you're going to get a check for $10,000 you know, 10, minus whatever the you know, federal uh, income tax is withheld. So probably at least 30 35%. Um, so keep that in mind. And then the last thing is if you do have to pay it back, you're going to receive the taxed amount, but they're going to expect the full amount back. So you're going to have some accounting and tax issues if you have received a bonus and then have to pay back the full amount, especially if it's in a different year. Um, so if you're getting into a scenario like that, I definitely would talk to your accountant. If you don't have an accountant, I'd probably get one. Um, to talk about the tax implications of, you know, receiving a bonus, but then having to pay back um, more than you received. Now, negotiating a signing bonus, just like any other negotiation, you need to determine what's most important to you. Um, meaning, for some people, that's a non-compete. Uh, for others, it's the guaranteed base. For others, it's having some kind of productivity incentive. Uh, so you need to think, all right, what is most important to me 
Um, and then if you are going to negotiate the bonus, as I said before, it needs to be a reasonable amount. I mean, if you're asking for a $50,000 signing bonus, you know, you're going to get laughed out of uh, <laughs> the job opportunity. So it needs to be a reasonable ask. And so if they start at five, maybe ask for 15 and hope to settle around 10, um, something like that. Now, uh, you should also receive moving expenses as well if you're going to move for a job opportunity. I find it's less likely in the NP profession for the people to move cities just for a job. I mean, normally, once again, just a generalization, but you know, you work as an RN in the city for a while and then you go to school and then you finally become an NP. Uh, and I just think the kind of city to city move just for an MP position is much less likely than for a physician uh, or a PA. That's just, that's my experience. So anyway, hopefully that helps about the average signing bonus for an MP. Uh, if you have any questions about your employment agreement or independent contractor agreement, uh, you can contact my law firm at the contact information listed below in the description. Um, if you have any uh, questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them, and I appreciate you watching the video. All right, thank you. Bye.